Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to set up this. This is a moisture sensing, self watering, gravity fed, powerless hydroponic system. Let's get to it. Now, by this point, I must just seem like a walking ad for Bunnings because uh, Bunnings is where you get it. Uh, I'll add links in the description for those overseas viewers that must have this kit. So essentially, in the box, uh, we have uh, all your connections for connecting an irrigation system to a water tank. There's a little bulkhead fitting uh, that fits the size tubing. And uh, also you've got a tap adapter that will adapt that bulkhead fitting uh, to a tap. But in here is the magic. These are the moisture sensors. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure this is made of, it looks like a porcelain, but it may be a type of terracotta. Um, and in this device, there's a pressure valve at the top. And when we set these up, you have to fill them up with water and what I assume happens in this system is that the osmotic pressure uh, or the capillary action that pulls the water out of this sensor opens this valve at the top and inside here, there's a little um, wedge that pushes against the tubing and that starts and stops the flow of water. So step one is we remove the ceramic head. It is actually ceramic. I've read the instructions now. Um, and soak them in water for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna do that. So this is the system layout. I've set up a stand, which I'm gonna have my res on. Uh, it's going to feed down to the plant, which will be lined along here like this. Now, uh, I'm going to switch some of my peppers uh, or the capsicum that I've got in the auto pots onto this system as uh, I want to use the auto pots for some other experiments I'm doing at the moment. So. Now we can go and prepare the media. The media I'm gonna use is a cocoa perlite media. Uh, generally, the accepted ratio of cocoa to perlite is about, for this purpose, is about uh, 60 to 40. Uh, 60 being the cocoa, 40 being the perlite. So for the eight pots that I need to fill, I'm gonna use um, a premium grade of cocoa peat, uh, which is hydroponic grade, which means that it's been washed of excess uh, salts, calcium, uh, potassium, etc. cetera. Uh, cocoa will always, always have a little bit extra calcium and potassium, that's fine. Uh, you can either use a cocoa uh, specific nutrient solution or I haven't really had any problems with it. So I'm just you know going with the normal nutrient solution. And this is a, I think it's a medium grade of uh, perlite. This is 90 litres of cocoa, and I'll be adding to it uh, 45 litres of perlite. Now, that actually gives me a bit more. It gives me about nine uh, pots worth, uh, but that's fine. I can always use an extra pot uh, around the place. Now that we've got that mixed, we can go inside and do the second half of our soaking routine for the moisture sensors. For this next part, uh, we're going to keep the moisture sensors full um, and add the tops in, screwing them up uh, so that they seal. And 
then leaving them in the water for another 15 minutes, trying not to have any air in the sensors themselves. All right, now we can leave those for 15 minutes to soak uh, while we fill our pots. Now I'm only gonna fill the pots half full for now because I'm actually gonna add plants in. I'm going to save some of the eggplants from the NFT, uh, which I'm gonna transfer over to a leafy greens solution so it won't be appropriate for the eggplants fruiting in the system. And I'll probably add in some uh, extra capsicum out of the flood and drain, which aren't doing so good because they're not getting enough sun because of the size of the silver beets. Uh, so I'll fill them up half, we'll add in the plants, and then we'll add on uh, the rest of the cocoa on top around the plants. So this is an eggplant out of the flood and drain, and uh, I'm gonna transplant it into these buckets. <sighs> As you can see, this eggplant was doing fantastically in the NFT, um, but I want it to continue doing fantastically uh, even after I change the nutrient solution. So uh, we're gonna rob it of its treasure. Um, <laughs> that's a big eggplant. <laughs> All right, and we'll plant her in one of our buckets. And now we're going to water them in really thoroughly. We want them as, as drenched as possible. Uh, this is actually part of the instructions for the devices we're using. Uh, then I'm going to tie them up. I'm going to do the watering first just because it's really hot and I've just taken these out of a completely water environment uh, and I don't want them to get any major shock. <clears throat> Once you've watered them in, just add in cocoa uh, wherever the cocoa is settled in the pots. So you want to see this coming out the bottom of your pot. And now I'll just tie the plants up with some soft rubber plant ties. So it's cooking here, it's uh, 32 degrees Celsius. I'll have a conversion like there or there. And um, yeah, try not to do it when it's this hot, like transplanting. Um, I just don't have any other time to film. So hard to go to Bunnings to grab some um, bases for the pots because uh, they're just draining too fast, um, which is fine. Uh, once there's a water level at the bottom, uh, it, it will hold moisture better. And I'm going to go through water them all again once I've got bases, and then we can install the system. So I'm going to water them with uh, full strength hydroponic nutrient. All the plants in the system are already hardened to full strength nutrient. So there's going to be no problem with shock. Uh, if you are starting seedlings that you've purchased from a nursery or something, um, start them on. Uh, you can either start them on water or uh, maybe a half strength nutrient, then work. Uh, they'll, they'll eventually work their way up to the full strength nutrient you put in the, the reservoir uh, as it feeds through and replaces that uh, water that's in the pots themselves. I'm now going to drill a hole in my res. Uh, my res is a 150 litre food safe uh, poly container, uh, which is actually uh, UV proof, uh, UV stable, uh, and there's, it's light proof as well, so I don't need to paint it. You have to have this raised above the level uh, that the drippers are going to come out. Ideally, I should probably have, have this raised a little bit higher, uh, but the, the height in the reservoir will give me that, even if it doesn't drain all the way down. Um, I can figure that out uh, as I come to that problem though. I'm going to use a tap. The kit comes with like a little uh, four mil uh, bulkhead that you can just adapt it onto the, the line. Uh, but I want the ability to turn it off and unscrew it so that I can um, 
tip this out, wash it out, put it back up. And I had this lying around. Uh, so the tap adapter for that bulkhead fitting, I'm going to adapt to the bottom of this, which is just a standard tap fitting. All right, I know. <laughs> I can't get in there. So my, my, my shoulders are too wide. So if you have one of these lying around, they're really useful sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so you, you just get your tool and put it into the barrel. Come on, get in there. Very nice. So I'm just going to run the line along the plants um, and along each side. And I've got a little TP separator so that I can run it along the other side as well. And they've supplied two end pieces for uh, two of the water sensors. So I'm now going to go along and install all of the sensors um, and I'm going to install them so that they're facing the plant um, so that they drip onto the plant. Now they say to install the sensor up to a depth of uh, here uh, which is the I guess the top of the ceramic which is inside the plastic um, and that way it, it's it deep enough to sense in the root zone. Um, so I'll install them by just pushing them straight into the ground or the um, cocoa, and then that drippers now directly above the plant. Um, and I'll do that for each of the buckets, um, uh, each of the pots. Just make sure you put your end ones at the end pot. That's your end piece. So that was probably the most annoying part of this whole um, experience with this build. Um, because this pipe is so bendy straight out of the box. You really have to make sure um, that you don't kink these ground pipes um, because if you kink them, it will stop the flow and they're really easy to kink. So like, see that? That's kinked. Um, so you just have to make sure. I mean, I was going to stake them in, but I don't think it's entirely necessary um, as long as I'm, I make sure that where I've left the pipes is where they stay, uh, it shouldn't be a problem, really. So yeah, you have to make sure that this isn't happening. So you just turn it like that. Okay, hopefully those kinks will work their way out of those pipes. Uh, I might need to stake them if it continues happening. All right, so now I'm gonna fill up the system with water and we can do the final fine tuning adjustments uh, on the water sensors. Now, uh, I've got to open each one of them until it flows so that we clear out the air in the pipes. Um, and then uh, we close them until there's a single drip. And then you close it, there's two tiny, uh, four tiny arrows on the top. You close it two quarters with the two arrows turn. Um, and then that's the system set. You then have to come back and check it a couple of times. Um, but that's it. You don't have to touch it again after that for a whole season of growing. So uh, until you reset the plants, until you put them into a new pot, uh, you don't have to do anything. You just have to fill up the res. All right, so here we go. Turn it on. Open it up. There we go. So that's feeding out. So I'll bring it so that it has just a single drop at the end. Like that. So when they come, uh, they come done up. Uh, so there's this little kink uh, that's usually just from it being tightened in storage. Uh, if you press that, open it, it'll just come rushing out. So uh, we'll adjust it down to uh, one drip. Now all I've got to do is add in my hydroponic nutrient, give it a stir. I'll balance the pH in a second, but generally uh, my water and the nutrient actually 
um, doesn't need to be pH balanced. It, it's it's pretty ideal, really. Measure the EC. Yep. Chuck on the lid. And there you have it. These water sensors were, I think they were eighty seven Australian dollars. I might be wrong, but it's an order of magnitude cheaper than auto pots. The one thing that kind of annoyed me was uh, that there were no stakes in the pack to hold down uh, those irrigation tubes um, to stop the little brown tubes from kinking. Uh, I'll probably just grab some stakes, uh, plastic ones to throw in there. Uh, one thing I will have to watch is because this is made for water irrigation, uh, I'm not sure how the little brown uh, squeezy tubes that control the flow are going to go with soluble salts. I don't think we'll have a problem uh, purely because uh, the flow should clean them out. But I'll have to check. I'll let you know how it goes. And that's the system finished. I'm really looking forward to doing absolutely nothing to this system. I mean, except for changing the reservoir on occasion. I love passive systems uh, because that means I get to concentrate on doing more videos. And speaking of concentrating on doing more videos, I've cut back on work to concentrate on bringing you more content. So if you want to see more Huchos, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get those numbers up. Let's spread the hydroponic word, hydroponics for humanity. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking. And here we are, about to get smashed by a storm. <laughs> Lucky I tied the plants up. There's the storm. So yeah.